Hello friends, this is Anand Pai from Academy in Pursuit of Engineering Excellence. Today we will continue our series on fluid mechanics in that chapter 3 fluid kinematics. Today we will discuss an important topic which is continuity or mass conservation equation. We will derive both integral and the differential form of the continuity equation. Now when deriving the integral equation, we will take help of Reynolds transport theorem. Hence we will discuss what is Reynolds transport theorem also. Along with that we will understand what is the difference between a control mass and a control volume. Okay? So let us understand first what is mass conservation. Mass conservation is whatever is coming in has to go out or either accumulate. Okay? So mass cannot be destroyed nor created. Okay? This is what is the basics of mass conservation equation. Now there are two ways in which we can have it. Either we can have it in integral form or in the differential form. For both the integral form as well as differential form, we use something called control volume approach. Control volume approach is related to Eulerian framework where we stay at a point and observe the uh, fluid mass coming in and going out. Okay? Now let us see what is the difference between a control mass and a control volume. Okay? So now control mass, this control mass has to be seen as a system or a closed system in thermodynamics. It is equivalent to that. Now control mass is can also be related to Newton's law of motion where mass is being defined. Okay? So that mass or any of the uh, laws of physics are actually defined by, for a control mass. It's always for a unit mass that laws of physics are defined. Generally, or uh, main importantly, the Newton's laws of motion. Because fluid mechanics is based on mechanics and mechanics is based on Newton's law of motion. So like that it goes. Okay? So one of the things what happens is control mass is a mass which is accumulated at a place or a mass which is there. So there is no mass transfer across the boundary. The mass cannot reduce. The mass is the same. Okay? So there is no mass transfer across the boundary. And the basic laws of physics are stated either for a particle or for a control mass. Now, in contrast, control volume is a fixed volume in space with a defined boundary. Okay? We are not worried how much mass is there, whether the mass is coming in or going out. We are not worried. Okay? So it is a fixed volume in space with respect to some coordinate system. That's it. Now, the laws of physics that are defined for the control mass, we have to define for the control volume. And the law or the theorem that we use is a Reynolds transport theorem to connect the laws of physics which is defined for the control mass to the control volume which we use in fluid mechanics. Okay? So let us first see what is the Reynolds transport theorem. Reynolds transport theorem states that the time rate of change of an extensive property, extensive property as in thermodynamics we saw, what is the extent, how big the system is, depending on that the property is, uh, property is there. For example, mass of a uh, body, it depends on how big the mass is, okay? Based on that, its property is increased, so extensive, extent, okay? Now, other side is intensive, where intensive means how concentrated that is. For example, density or uh, maybe uh, specific volume or maybe temperature, these are all intensive property. So, time rate of change of extensive property, the property which depends on the extents. For a closed system, okay, very important, it is for a closed system, okay, is equal to time rate of change of that n, that property, within the control volume and the net flux, flux means how, what is the rate at which it is going out, okay, and the net rate of flux of the property n through the control surface. Control volume has a control surface. So how fast the uh, the extent change of extensive property of a control mass is equal to rate of change of the control uh, rate of change of that property inside the control volume plus the rate of flux. Let us understand using this diagram. Okay. Here you can see there is a control volume and control mass at time t is the same. It is coinciding at the initial circle. Okay? V is the velocity. N, small n 
is the normal to the surface okay so now the control mass would move after some time but the control volume is fixed in space so as the control mass moves the rate of change of that property of the control mass for which the laws of physics is defined is equal to the rate of change of that property in that control volume plus the flux flux comes all round that particular control volume it comes all round that control volume okay some things is going out and something is coming in so what is going out plus coming in that is taken into consideration plus what is changing inside so reynolds transport theorem becomes easy in that it is similar to saying that net flux net flux means what is going out minus coming in and what is changing inside that is equal to the rate of change of that extensive property of the closed system now let us see this mathematically mathematically it is said that d by dt the rate of change of that n property any property it can be about the control mass cm is equal to d by dt of n that particular n in the control volume plus the net flux what is coming in and what is going out minus what is coming in now if i define this in terms of the uh, what do you say further if i define this d of dt of ncm is equal to d by dt integral uh, along the control volume eta now what is eta eta is that particular property divided by mass that means it makes it a specific property okay so that eta is equal to n by m that particular extensive property divided by n m that means it makes specific properties like if you have entropy it becomes specific entropy it becomes n if it is energy it is specific energy like that it goes okay so eta into rho rho is the density into volume dv is v with a cap is a volume with a dash is a volume okay plus integration along the control surface eta into rho into v dot n v is the velocity dotted with n that is the normal velocity to the surface into the area of the surface this defines our reynolds transport theorem next let us see mass conservation equation using reynolds transport theorem now when we say conservation of mass along the uh, along this control volume what happens that eta is actually or the extensive property capital m is actually the uh, mass of the system because extensive property and eta which is mass by mass n by m here n is mass only so that eta becomes equal to 1 so the property n is mass m so eta is equal to n by m so now d by dt of mass of the system that is a control uh, control mass okay is equal to d by dt of integral along the control volume 1 instead of eta i have used 1 into rho into dv plus integration of c along this control surface into rho into v dot n into da now if you see that change of mass of a closed system is zero because the for a closed system the mass does not change so uh, the left hand side of that particular equation the previous equation is zero that is d by dt of m system is zero so my uh, reynolds transport theorem or the conservation of mass or the continuity equation in general becomes this d by dt along the control volume rho dv small volumes we are going to integrate okay plus along the control surface integration into rho into v dot n into da okay so now this is the continuity equation in for the uh, in the integral form okay this is what is called the integral form of the continuity equation now in case it was steady then d by dt is not there okay d by dt goes off the change of density is not there so what happens d by dt is equal to 0 so the mass conservation equation becomes integration along the control surface rho into v dot n into da is equal to 0 this is the mass conservation equation for a steady flow in the integral now let us see how this can be applied to engineering use okay now we will simplify this equation for engineering purposes for example there might be engineering device where there are number of inlets and outlets now that continuity equation which we have had is for multiple when it is along the surface which is in general okay 
Now, if it has a finite number of inlets and outlets, then we can write i is equal to 1 to n. Here, n doesn't mean the property. It means the number n. Okay. Rho into Vn. Vn is the normal velocity, normal to the surface. Into a, area of that surface, i is equal to 0. Now, Vn can be written as V cos theta, where cos theta is the angle between the velocity and the normal to the area. Okay. So now, here we can have it also if a, uh, V1, V2, V3 are, we consider it as a normal velocities, then we can write rho 1, A1, V1 is equal to rho 2, A2, V2 plus rho 3, A3, V3 is equal to and so on is equal to 0. This is the continuity equation for uh, the finite number of inlets and outlets. Now, if it is a one dimensional flow, just like in a pipe flow, pipe flow can be considered as one dimensional. Okay. For example, there is a area which is increasing and uh, increasing or reducing or area is varying. So now if I consider this, the flow, the velocity, the uh, volume flow rate can be written as rho 1 a1 into v1. And the other side, not the volume flow rate, I am sorry, the mass flow rate. Mass flow rate can be written as rho 1 a1 into v1 and rho 2 a2 into v2. So this has to be the same if the continuity in a steady case, this has to be the same. So if it is a steady case, then we can write rho 1 a1 v1 is equal to rho 2 a2 v2 in case of the uh, simple one dimensional one. In gate or some of the competitive exams, this is asked frequently and this is what we remember. If we take rho is same, we can write a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2 which is the continuity equation what we understand. Okay. Next, let us consider continuity equation in differential form. Now, when we consider differential form, we define a differential element a, b, c, d and e, f, g, h which is very small with dimensions dx, dy and dz. Now, if I consider the mass which is coming inside this control volume, it is given through the surface a, b, c, d. Okay. So, through the surface a, b, c, d, the mass which is coming in is given by rho u dy dz. And mass which is leaving out is given by rho into do rho by do x into dx into u plus do u by do x into dx into dy dz. Now, if you consider this, do rho by do x is the rate of change of that particular density when it goes the distance dx into dx gives the change. So, this is the density at the end at the efgh plane and this is the velocity at the efgh plane into dy dz. This gives us the mass flow rate. So, the mass accumulated is equal to mass entering minus mass leaving. So, in the x direction, this can be given as rho u dy dz minus rho plus do rho by do x into dx plus u plus do u by do x into dx into dy dz. When we simplify this, we get this particular equation. Now, here, if we say that these things, these small elements here, that is do rho, do u by do x, do rho by do x into dx square. This is a very small one. dx itself is small. When you square it, it will become still smaller. So, we will neglect this part. So, if we neglect this, then what happens? This can be written as do of rho u by do x into dx dy dz. This is in the x direction. Similar way, in the y direction, it can be given as minus do rho v by do x into dx dy dz. Similar way, in the z direction, it can be given as do of rho w dx into dx dy dz. Now, here we have to keep in mind that whenever we say velocity, velocity is ui plus vj plus wk. This we have to keep in mind. So, u, v, w we are considering is a scalar component of the velocity in the x, y and z direction which we have defined but so that you will not have confusion I am telling you again. Okay. Next, in the differential form we will continue this. The total rate of mass accumulation, what is the mass accumulated inside the control volume is given by dou into rho dv. 
here v is the volume dv is the volume here rho is the density so change in mass per time now here this is a control volume so mass can change okay so this can be written as do rho by do t into dx dy dz so now if i consider the total mass accumulated is sum of mass entering minus mass leaving in each direction so let us equate that so do rho by do t into dx dy dz is equal to minus do of rho u by do x dx dy dz and similarly in the other three other two directions okay now when we simplify this that is dx dy dz cancels on both sides of the equation so we get this continuity equation so the continuity equation is given as do rho by do t plus do rho u by do x plus do rho v by do y plus do rho w by do z is equal to 0 and this is a very very important equation for the whole of fluid mechanics studies very 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 important equation okay so i'm putting a five star for this so that it's very very important okay fluid mechanics cannot go without continuity equation okay next let us see some of the different conditions in which control uh, this continuity equation changes we know this is the continuity equation so now continuity equation for the steady flow steady flow means there is no uh, change with respect to time so what happens do rho by do t becomes equal to 0 and this is the continuity equation without do rho by do t is equal to 0 now if the continuity equation is uh, for the incompressible flow we have to define then density is a constant so density can be taken out of the differential form and it goes out with 0 okay so what we get is do u by do x plus do v by do y plus do w by do z is equal to 0 now if it is an incompressible flow the continuity equation becomes same for steady as well as unsteady flow so incompressible flow we cannot differentiate both for both condition this is there that is do u by do x plus do v by do y plus do w by do z is equal to 0 is continuity equation for both steady as well as unsteady incompressible flows now if you consider in one dimensions we can write do rho u by do x is equal to 0 since it is one dimension we can replace it by d also but here what is happening when you integrate that we get rho u is equal to constant and what is that constant that constant can be given as rho u into q by a q is the mass flow rate okay so rho u a is equal to constant which is the mass flow rate okay so rho u a is equal to q which is a constant and this can be written rho u a 1 is equal to rho u a at 2 this is the continuity equation we know okay so further videos we will solve some of the problems based on continuity equation so that we will understand it to the very very uh, understand it fully okay if you have any doubt students kindly put on the comment okay uh, my videos will be premiered generally so when it is premiered i will be available online so you can ask me uh, the questions in the online chat and I will be answering there itself ok and uh, kindly subscribe my channel press the bell icon so that you will get notification of the uh, videos and uh, best of luck for your exam students thank you